All right, let's get started. Okay, so we still get your attention up here in the front. And three, two, one. We still have the same question. Momentum, is it conserved? Uh, and the reason for that, yesterday I said that momentum is conserved in all collisions and explosions. So why would we still have this question up here? And the reason is that there's actually different types of collisions. How many different types are there? Three. So, goals for today. First one is to define elastic, inelastic, and perfectly inelastic collisions. And the second is we're going to solve some momentum conservation problems related to just inelastic collisions. So we're just going to look at one of these types. This one is the most common type that happens with most collisions that we experience in, uh, in our day-to-day -day life. Um, so we're going to look at that one today, and then we'll look at the other ones. Uh, in the following day. Um, so I want to go over just a few terms in here. Uh, we know what collisions are. That's when how many things bump into each other? Two or more, right? And um, what does perfect mean? What's perfect mean? No flaws? What else? Oh, well, perfectly inelastic means they stick together. I was just trying to get at what perfect means. Like, to me, perfect is, you know, like, exactly as it's supposed to be, right? No flaws, like you said. So, then we have a few other terms here. We have elastic and inelastic. Have you heard of elastic before? Okay, what about inelastic? It, pr probably not so much, right? But elastic, what's elastic? Let's think about what that is. What is Things that stretch, right? What else? Rubber bands, something that bounces. Can we say bounces back to the original form? Okay, right? So the, you have a good idea of what elastic is. When you think of inelastic, what do you think the prefix in means? It's not, right? So I know you don't use that word a whole lot, but using your ability to make words, you can figure out what it means. Right? We know what elastic is, things that are bouncy and return to their original form. Inelastic is just the opposite, things that don't return to their original form. Like I saw a car accident this morning on my way to work. And the hood of the car, which was supposed to look like this, looked like a tent. Did it bounce back? No. It was definitely inelastic. Right? Uh, so we're going to look at those today. All right. So we're going to go through some terms and some examples and things <coughs> as we go through the warm-up. What does deformation mean? Or you might say deformation. It doesn't really matter. What's that mean? Right, yes. Changing in shape, right? Distortion. That's good. So changing shape. You're just saving up energy yesterday for today? Is that what's going on? In your rest mode or something? All right, so changing shape is a great one. Um, what does it mean to form? Come together, another word, create, make. So what, do, what would it mean to deform? Take part, like unmake, right? So we can think of it that way too. Uh, like deformation is like a, an unmaking, unmake, right, to like take apart, that kind of thing. So there's a few different ways to think about what deform means. So most people think about it as, as changing shape, right? Like, uh, you know, you squish something, squish something, you change its shape. All right, um, so we got that. And so some collisions have lots of deforming and other collisions don't. And the amount of deforming is actually how they get classified into these three different groups. Some things barely deform at all. And those we call elastic and uh, some things uh, deform a lot, and we call those things perfectly inelastic, and then there's stuff that's in between. So, um, let's talk about this. What type, or what kind of collision involves two objects bouncing off of each other? You can actually think about which of these words sounds like it means bouncing. Which one? Elastic. Okay. Elastic. Right? When you think of elastic, returning to form, you should think of bouncing, right? So like most of you are wearing a t-shirt, 
the neck is a little bit stretchy, that's elastic, right? Same thing with your undies, all elastics, your socks, right? Your socks stretch to get over your heel, there's elastic there, it all returns back to its original form. And what are some other examples of things that are elastic? Spring rubber band, right? Um, okay. Right. So think about those things when you're thinking about uh, things returning to their form, right? Skin, like that. Okay. So what kind of collision involves two objects sticking together? Which of these three? So this is called perfectly inelastic. So. I wrote that really messy, sorry, but perfectly inelastic. And what's in between these two is in between bouncing and sticking together. So the in between would be like a car accident where two cars bump, they get deformed a little bit, but then they separate, they don't stick together. Right? Um, and actually an example of inelastic is every single collision that you ever experienced in your entire life. Because almost all collisions involve some kind of bouncing, even if it's just a little bit. And all collisions involve some kind of deforming. You might not know that, but it's true. Um, I meant to put some pictures up and I forgot, but you can look up the collision of a baseball bat and a baseball Oh yeah, that's right, my internet's off. Well, okay, you can look it up. Yeah, I'm trying to find this like a slow-mo photo of a baseball being hit by a baseball bat or a tennis ball being hit by a tennis racket. If you look those things up, it's interesting what the shape of the baseball becomes. Right? What do we think of a baseball? It's hard, right? If you ever tried to squish a baseball, you can squeeze the, just the surface, because it's made of leather. You can squeeze it just a little bit, but just a teeny little bit, like a couple millimeters, that's it. But if you hit it with a baseball bat, it looks like a thick taco. It looks like this. That's what the ball looks like in the side. Yeah. I mean, that's a little dramatic, but that's what happens. So, you can find some pictures. Basically, the bat does this to the ball. Here's the bat, right there. There's the ball. And it deforms. Yeah? For any elastic collision, do both things have to be moving at the same time? No, just one thing could be moving. So, like, it can be a ball or a ball. Yeah. Yeah, and if you, you, you probably know this, if you, if you uh, like stand on a tennis ball, can you squish it? Oh yeah. yeah. Right, so tennis balls are easier to deform than say a baseball. And if you hit a tennis ball, you throw it, like you mentioned, if you threw a tennis ball against the wall, it would deform and then it wants to go back to its original form. Mm -hmm. So that's how it springs back and comes back to you, right? It like, it compresses like a spring and then boom, releases. So. There's lots of examples of things that are inelastic like that. They deform some during a collision, and, uh, and then they return to their original state. Um, let's go through a couple more uh, examples, and then we'll get these, uh, or a couple more questions, and then we'll get to these examples. So in an elastic collision, what's conserved? Oh, momentum. Yeah, so momentum's conserved, okay. Uh, what about, so mass is conserved, the mass stays the same. Momentum. And what about kinetic energy? Yeah. So in an elastic collision, it is. And, and so let me tell you why. Um, actually, let's get to some examples and then I'll tell you why. What are some examples of elastic collisions? You may have had to look these up. Yeah. Well, so not, in, not any kind of kind of ball would do that because most balls are too flexible and so they lose some energy because they're deforming. 
And since we're talking about that, I will just explain right now. So I don't have a squishy ball on me, but I have this, right? Can I squish this? Yeah, I can, I can, right? So if I move my arm, does my arm have kinetic energy? It does, right? And so when it runs into this, it uses some of that kinetic energy. And what happened to the shape of this rag? Did it get squished? So it deformed, right? So do you have to use energy to deform things? Yeah. So if you use some energy to deform things, that means that that energy is now like gone somewhere else. So I used my kinetic energy to, to, to deform this, right? It took some energy to do that. And when you do that, you don't get all that energy back. It's now gone into like heat to, that, that comes from when you deform things, right? When you squish stuff, it, they heat up because the molecules are rubbing around. So in inelastic collisions like that one, when I just hit that or when a ball squishes against the wall right, and changes its shape or this baseball bat, uh, we lose kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is not conserved in collisions like that. But in elastic collisions, it is. And so to understand that, you gotta think about examples of what kinds of collisions are elastic where there is no flexing, no bending, where things just bounce back. So did anybody find any examples of what elastic collisions are? Oh yeah, that's a good one. You ever seen the, it's like five steel spheres and they're all hanging and you can swing one and then the one hits, 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 hits. And it's almost instantaneous that, that one on the other end goes and you can drop two or you can do both and they'll go boop. Yeah, it's like a Newton's cradle, right? So that's one. And what what do you um what would you say about the like the quality of those spheres? How could you describe them? They're made of really hard metal and it doesn't change shape much. Where I said every collision you've ever experienced is actually not elastic and not perfect, but it's somewhere in the middle. Um, uh, and that's because even things that are super duper hard still change shape a little bit when they collide. But things like that are pretty close to this. So, yeah, so that's a, I think it's called a Newton's Cradle, but you can Google it and tell me. Is that what it's called? Okay, that's one. Anything else that's super duper hard like that that bounces without doing a lot of deforming? There was some stuff in the, the notes that I gave you. Found it. Los Angeles, so I'll act. Here we go. Yeah, so the pool balls or billiard balls, that's one. They're really hard, and when they hit, they don't they don't deform much. Right? Okay. There's one more that's uh, that does a pretty good job of approximating these, and this is a game where you're usually like this, and you're doing this. <laughs> and it's air hockey, right? So the air hockey pucks are also very solid. They don't deform a whole lot. So these things, these three things, do a pretty good job of approximating uh, elastic collisions. Okay. An inelastic collision, what are some examples of that? Where there's some deforming. Car, car action, right? Okay. What else? What else? What? Baseball. Okay. Right. So the baseball. Pretty much every collision. Okay. Then we have perfectly inelastic. So if inelastic is where there's some deforming, perfectly inelastic is where the things that are colliding do what? They stick. So that's the perfect part. The perfect thing is that not only do they deform, but they deform enough that they stick together. That's why it's perfect, because they don't bounce off of each other. The perfect part is no bouncing. So what could do that? Have you ever done that before? Uh, Magnus is a good idea, but that brings in magnetic uh, like uh, force, right? And yeah, so that brings in a different thing. So thinking about things that don't rely on outside stuff, like tape is another example that's kind of like magnets, right? It's like cheap. So what about stuff that doesn't stick? Um, because it's sticky, but would just 
to form and stay together. So it could be a car collision, right? right? Where they where the two vehicles stick. Um, but probably you haven't done that in your life. There's things like toys and stuff that you play with when you're a kid that does this kind of stuff. Huh? I'm getting it like clay or putty, right? Like that kind of thing. So clay is a is a good example. Uh, here's here's one of my favorites. You know when you go to the mall and you're walking in the aisle, like in between the stores, and there's that lady with the cart, and she has the, the little squishy ball, and she waits till the kids come, and then she throws it on the floor, and it goes splat, oh, yeah. and it's the one that so it all expands, mm -hmm. and then every kid wants to get it, and it's like five bucks, and then you take it home, and 10 minutes later, it's super dirty, and you throw it away. Those, right? Because those, yeah. Yeah, just throw it against it, right? Yeah, yeah. And it gets super grimy. You gotta have a really clean floor. So those, all right? That that ball that goes splat at the mall, all right? I don't know what it's called. That ball that goes splat at the mall. Okay, there you go. So that thing. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. So those deform, right? They don't bounce at all, right? All the energy goes into de deforming the ball. And uh, and so that's what you get. Okay, so here's our three different types of collisions. Again, we go from bouncing perfectly, that's elastic, no deforming, to not bouncing at all, that's perfectly inelastic. And in between is just regular inelastic. So those are our three levels of things, okay? So if that makes sense, great. Uh, if it doesn't, the video is pretty comprehensive and the notes are really good. There's not really any math in understanding this. All right? So usually this is a pretty friendly concept for everybody because you don't have to calculate anything. You just have to understand the rules. Okay, so keep that stuff in mind. Today, what we're going to look at is just ala sorry, what did I say? inelastic collisions. Right? So the most common type all right, where there's some deforming and some bouncing. It's like a mix. So, uh, we've got a purpose here. So scroll on down to 88A. Take a look at the purpose. Read it. It's a sentence. Should take you about 10 seconds. What does the word claim mean in here, in physics? What do you think claim means? Okay, it's something that's your opinion and other people can argue. Um, there's another word that starts with an H that usually gets used in science. Yeah, so hypothesis often gets used as this word. But for this activity, we're going to do something called claim evidence reasoning. So you're going to make a claim as to whether you think for this type of collision, inelastic collisions, that total system momentum is either conserved or not. So you're gonna say yes it is or no it's not. And then we're gonna gather some evidence. What do you think evidence is gonna be? If we're talking about momentum, what kinds of stuff are we gonna gather? Yeah, what kind of, what like, okay, we could be momentum data. What else can give us momentum information? Mass and? Velocity, very good. That's it. So we're going to look at those things. We're going to collect, collect some data. We're going to analyze it. And then we're going to use logical reasoning to state whether our claim was right or wrong and why it's right or wrong. So we're going to use some logic. All right, that's your job today. And we've got 29 minutes to do it, which is plenty of time. So uh, there's a little background thing right here that I'd like you to read. It's just a couple sentences. Please take a look at that. Uh, and then write down in your notes, write down your claim, um, whether you think momentum is conserved or not. And then I will show you how you're gonna gather some evidence and uh, what you're gonna do with that. That's it.
Well, so it goes. Oh, thanks. Okay, so you should have chosen whether you think momentum is or is not conserved for inelastic collisions. And then let's take a look at the handout together. Handout looks like this. So you'll see the purpose and the background are the same. This thing called getting ready is just telling you how to get to the website, but you don't need that because I gave you the link already. So don't worry about that part. There are two collisions you're gonna look at. So what I'd like you to do real quick is find the two collisions and just see what's happening in both. Okay, so find the two collisions and identify what's going to be going on. You can look at the picture or you can just look at the title. It tells you what's going on. So for the first collision, is the red cart moving? What about the blue cart? No, it's at rest. What about the second collision? So in both collisions, the end result is that they're gonna stick. Um, however, in the, in the second collision, are both cars moving? Yeah, are they moving at the same velocity? No, which one's going faster? Red, okay. So. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to set this up using this thing. Okay. And you may want to drag down here in the bottom right cor corner to make this, you know, bigger so you can see it a little bit better, or you might want to make it full screen. It's up to you. It's really simple to use. You can adjust the velocities. We're going to do inelastic collisions. So you want to click on inelastic collisions down here and then choose the correct velocities. And again, the velocities are up to you as long as you make sure the blue card's at rest for the first collision. And then you can choose whatever mass combos you want. It's again, up to you. And then you're going to use this table. How many of these tables are you going to make? Two, right? So you're going to use one for each collision. And then you're just going to solve for the momentum before and after the collision for each car. You're gonna add up the uh, before collision momenta to get the system total. And again, I'm showing you stuff up here on the board, so you probably wanna look. Uh, this column, this last column over here on the right says delta momentum, which means change in momentum. So you wanna figure out how much the momentum changed between, uh, for the red cart, say, for, between before and after the collision. So how do we do that? What does change mean? What minus what? Final minus initial. So we do final, which is after minus before and that's our change so we can gather lots of data here and then it's pretty easy to look at it and see if momentum was conserved or not so that's your job uh, and then the, what you're going to do with that is write a little conclusion paragraph right with your claim identify the evidence that you used and then write a paragraph just logically saying uh, why your claim is true or not okay so that's that's the deal that's it Hopefully it's pretty straightforward. I'll be coming around to help you out if you need some help, uh, but that's that's the deal. And we'll go over a little bit of this stuff after you've had a chance to work on it for a bit.